In a previous video, we spent time talking about how to use tools from the Aviation Weather Center. While this site is a great resource and has plenty of tools, from a briefing perspective, it does have one significant limitation. In this video, we'll investigate the components of a standard briefing, explore why the Aviation Weather Center can't provide a full one, then recommend where to get a standard briefing and why I recommend using those sources. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> so, what is a standard preflight briefing? According to several FAA sources, there are seven components to a standard briefing. They are 1. Adverse conditions. These are reported or forecast meteorological or aeronautical conditions that might influence a pilot to change or delay a proposed flight. 2. Synopsis. This is a brief statement describing the type, location, and movement of weather systems and air masses which might also impact a flight. 3. Current conditions. <laughs> These are exactly what they sound like. A quick note regarding current conditions. These may not be provided if the estimated departure is more than two hours in the future. 4. Forecast conditions. Forecast conditions include both en route and destination phases of flight. 5. Winds aloft. These are forecasts of wind direction and velocity. 6. NOTAMs. Notices to air missions are notices containing abnormal status information essential to flight operations, but not known far enough advanced to be publicized by other means. And 7. PIREPs. Pilot reports are observations of actual conditions at the time of reporting. L let me pause for a moment to highlight PIREPs. Not enough general aviation pilots provide pilot reports. Let's change that. PIREPs can be critical in determining how similar actual conditions are to the forecast. <laughs> if you're on an IFR flight plan or using VFR flight following, making a pilot report is very simple. If you're not comfortable giving a pilot report, I'll discuss them in more detail in a later video. <laughs> so why can't we get a standard weather briefing from aviationweather.gov? We'll get to that in a minute, but first, let's look at where we can get a regulatory compliant standard briefing. <laughs> According to the AIM, Chapter 7, Section 1-2A, the FAA provides the flight service program to serve the weather needs of pilots through the flight service stations and through the LIDOS flight service. Chapter 7, Section 1-2C notes that weather and aeronautical information are also available from numerous private industry sources and that pilots can receive regulatory compliant briefings without contacting flight service. However, 7-1-3F notes that not all weather products meet the FAA NWS control standards. Therefore, before using these non-FSS products, a pilot should review an appropriate description of the services and the provider disclosures to make sure they meet or exceed the control standards of the FAA or NWS products. Because I'm a ForeFlight user, I spent some time looking into whether or not ForeFlight provided a regulatory compliant briefing. If you go to their site, ForeFlight notes that all their information comes from federal regulatory agencies. The FAA refers to this in AIM 7-1-3K.3 as repackaging, so their standard briefing does meet regulatory compliance standards. Since I also use Garmin Pilot, I looked into their products too. In 2021, Garmin Pilot added the ability to use the Lidos graphical briefing, so their briefing also meets regulatory compliance standards. So, what do I recommend? First, either use Lidos or ForeFlight to request a standard pre-flight briefing. Then review the results. I recommend this because both LIDOS and ForeFlight not only provide regulatory compliant information, but they also log a record of the date, time, and type of briefing you received. While this isn't required for Part 91 operations, in the event of an incident or accident, it sure can't hurt to have third-party verification that you complied with 14 CFR 91.103. Second, if you have any questions or need any assistance interpreting any of the weather information, call 1-800-WX-BRIEF or 1-800-992-7433. I recommend this because the folks that answer the phone are certified pilot weather briefers and are trained and experienced in interpreting the National Weather Service products. While they can't tell you whether or not to actually make the flight, they can tell you whether or not VFR flight is recommended. Further, they may point out things you've missed, and they can answer questions you might have about specific altitudes, routes, and locations. So, back to the question about why AviationWeather.gov can't provide a standard pre-flight briefing. Now, don't get me wrong. The Aviation Weather Center is a great source of information, and it provides many tools that can be used to explore and augment a standard briefing. In fact, I use it all the time, and will continue to do so. However, it doesn't provide all the necessary information for a standard briefing. 
According to FAA Aviation Circular 91-92, it is missing the notices to air missions, and that is why you cannot use it to get a complete standard pre-flight briefing. If you want more information on pre-flight briefings, I'd recommend reviewing Chapter 7 of the AIM, FAA Advisory Circular 91-92, and the Aviation Weather Handbook. I've put links to all of them in the description below. If this video was helpful, please comment, hit the thumbs up, and consider subscribing. If you're looking for more flight training information, I'd recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.